Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let, let us say it together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, what did He create first? The heavens. Heavens. Yes. Plural, heavens. And, and then He created the earth. So when He started this creative process, He didn't start by creating mankind, or He didn't start by create, creating the earth, but He created the heavens. And uh, we're going to try to understand what does this mean, the heavens, what heaven is, or heavens, and, uh, and learn how, uh, as Christians, if we put God first, if heaven comes first in our life, there's a special blessing for us. And I'd like to leave this place today just knowing that God's blessing is upon you. Amen. So it wasn't a, a cosmic accident that created uh, the heavens or the universe. Uh, another translation of this verse will be, in the beginning, God created the universe. And uh, above the earth, however, scientists identified different layers in the heaven. And uh, actually, science talks about seven different layers uh, of what we call the atmosphere. And the top layer is the exosphere, then you have the ionosphere, the mesosphere, all these different layers, and uh, the stratosphere, and all these layers compose what we call the sky, or heaven. So when we look up, we see the sky, we see heaven, and science found that there are, there are seven different layers uh, above or identifiable uh, the layers above the earth. Well, personally, I don't believe when the Bible says God created the heavens, that he's talking just about the atmosphere and about, you know, the space above our planet. But God created something in the spirit that we call heaven. So uh, it, it's common in uh, most religions <coughs> When people die, they go to a certain place. Their soul go to a place. So different beliefs during human history, they believed in different places. But we all have something in common. doesn't matter what religion we're talking about. Every religion believes that after we die, we go to a specific place. In most religions, like Christians, uh, Jews, Muslims, talk about this place that we call heaven or the heavens, or um, the, 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 the realm of the spirit. Now, in the, in the heavens, there's not only the presence of God, but there are spiritual beings. So when God created the heavens, He created angels, what we call angels. And uh, again, when we, we study angels, there's a, a discipline that studies angels, it's called uh, angelology. And according to old scriptures that are not included in the Bible, uh, there are different heavens. So all these uh, old uh, writings uh, talk about different heavens. And uh, both Jewish uh, tradition and also Muslim tradition talk about these seven heavens. Well, there's even a TV, a TV series with that, that name, Seven Heaven. And, and so this is something that is in the culture. And uh, so, so uh, traditionally, uh, uh, it talks about seven heavens and seven hells and seven celestial mansions, seven palaces of darkness, seven heavens, seven earths. So uh, there, there's a, a whole uh, theme, theme about the seven heavens. Now, as Christians, we cannot identify in Scripture these seven heavens. And we go by scripture. We believe in the Bible. So, but I, I like to explain that different traditions talk about seven heavens. This doesn't mean that they're real or that they exist. But it's rather curious to identify that science says there are seven layers of heaven above us. And when religion found that thousands of years ago, saying that there are seven different layers in the spiritual realm. This is just uh, curiosity. Um, now, I, I just hate to disappoint you by telling you that God didn't create mankind first, but He created heavens 
first, and all the angelical beings that exist in the heavenly places. The Bible in the New Testament talks about angelical armies. God is known in the Old Testament as the Lord of the hosts. And the hosts that he's talking about, it's not human hosts, but spiritual hosts. So God created the heavens. He created the angels. He created uh, an angel that we know uh, today as the devil or Lucifer. He was an angel created by God. He didn't exist. He's not a God. He was created by God. So there's all the angelical beings. And in the beginning, God started by creating everything that exists in the spiritual uh, realm. <clears throat> now, I like to tell you that there's more than one heaven. And uh, actually, I don't know if there's seven heavens or a million heavens or seven million heavens. But according to the New Testament, there's more than one heaven. According to, to, to uh, our Bible, to the New Testament, there's at least three heavens. And God chose to reveal Himself to each one of us in a different way. And to the Apostle uh, Paul, uh, he revealed himself on the third heaven. And so, so the New Testament talks about, about this in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 2 uh, to 4, where Paul said, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whatever it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. And he heard inexpressible things that man is not permitted to tell. Now, theologians say this man that is talking here, the third person was himself, was Paul. So it's kind of accepted that Paul is talking about himself, but he doesn't want to boast about the things he saw. And I've, I've met different people that had visions of, of hell and visions of heaven. And I've heard testimonials and there's uh, different people that travel around the world and they wrote uh, books about their uh, uh, trips to, to, to heaven or to hell and all these things. Uh, and, you know, it, it's all great. If, if you want to bring glory to the Lord, it's good. But we, didn't, uh, we shouldn't focus uh, on these uh, talents and, and just, uh, you know, oh, this person went to hell, oh, oh, so tell me what, what was there. And, and, and they start telling about the demons and what they saw and this. And, and this needs a lot of confusion. And it shouldn't be the focus or the theme uh, for a, a church or, or it shouldn't be even preached. Why? Because Paul is here telling us that he saw things but he's not even allowed to, to mention those things. Why? Because, uh, you know, God doesn't want us to, to get just focused on, the, on, the, on these visions, on these things, because different people will see heaven in different ways. That's uh, why we read the book of Ezekiel, and we, Ezekiel had visions of uh, amazing machines, uh, and, and these machines, uh, they, they're compared to robots, and there's people even that try to do illustrations with the descriptions of Ezekiel, and they come out with the, these amazing machines. Um, uh, so uh, uh, Daniel had different visions. You will see uh, human figures. And, and here we have Paul saying, I know a man, and we accept this man is himself. He went to a place which is the third heaven. So I don't know if there's seven, there's three, there's a million. But there's more than one. And that's what I would like to, to tell you. And Christians, Jews, and Muslims believe that God exists in the third heaven. So the presence of God is in a place that is called the third heaven. So uh, I heard people explain that the first heaven will be, you know, all these seven layers that we, we read about. And then the, the other heaven is the, the intergalactic space, the space between the planets and the stars that will be the second heaven. And then the third heaven will be the place where God is and all the angels. I really don't know. You know, I've, I've studied and I studied uh, those books called the Apocrypha and I read about the seven heavens and uh, there's names of angels that rule in the different realms. It's very interesting to study. But we cannot be sure that this is the reality. But what we should know is that God first created the heavens. 
So the spiritual realm was created before earth was created. So things that you're see, seeing were created, created from the invisible things. This doesn't make much sense. A very smart man, uh, Albert Einstein, he came out with the same idea, but from a scientific perspective. And he said that matter, things that exist, come out of the invisible world of energy. And he established even a mathematical equation that shows us uh, what matter is made of. And it's made out of energy. So everything we see around, it's made out of the invisible. So before things existed in the natural, they existed in the spirit, in another form. They already existed, but what God did, He spoke. And when He said, let there be light, uh, the, all those molecules, all those things that existed in the invisible realm for light. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And then He started to create order, and He created the earth. So, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, Scripture uh, teaches us is that God didn't create the earth by accident. The things we are seeing around us, it's not an accident, it's not a coincidence, but there's a higher intelligence that created all things. Now, this brings a lot of uh, arguments and discussions between science and religion, and we're right and you're wrong, and all these things. And I, I, I really don't like to debate people that are stubborn. But I like to talk with people that are open-minded. And most of the bright scientists that discover these things, they were even Christian or they believed in God. Einstein believed in God. Darwin believed in God. All these people were God-fearing people that believed in God. But they were smart enough to look around and, and, and see, how is this made? How is it possible that we have the trees and we have all these things? And they started by studying matter. And matter, everything that exists was created first in the spirit. And then from the spirit, God brought it to existence. Isn't that amazing? We serve an amazing God. Now, God chooses to reveal himself from the third heaven or from... The seventh heaven, I don't know, from heavens, plural, he chooses to reveal himself to certain people. And the reason why you're here, it's because one day you receive a revelation that God is real. And God wants to communicate with us. And he communicates in different ways. And one of the ways he communicates, he, he opened gates uh, in, in heaven. Now, Paul was caught up. He wasn't caught down. <laughs> he was caught up. So, when we think caught up, it's like he ascended to a higher level. Now, let me talk about heaven's gates. Now, in Genesis 20, 28, uh, we read the story of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. And he was fleeing from his uh, twin brother, Esau, who had uh, vowed to kill him. And Esau was furious with Jacob because Jacob had stolen his birthright. And, uh, and uh, he had the Jewish uh, claim to inheritance uh, as the, the older uh, brother, and he was persecuting his brother to, to kill him. And when uh, Jacob was on uh, his way to his relative's uh, house at uh, Haran, Jacob lay down for the night near a place called uh, Luz, L-U-Z. And he was dreaming. And while he was dreaming, he had the vision of a ladder or a stairway between heaven and earth. And God's angels were on it. Let's read the scripture. Genesis 28, verse 12, it says, And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. So here's the vision. There's a ladder, and there are angels, and the to me, one of the interesting parts is that the angels go first up and then down. So it seems that they were first on earth, and they're going from earth to heaven, and from heaven to earth. So he got this, this vision. And, uh, and this was so clear that this, this vision became the foundation, the foundation for 
the house of worship. So the house of worship, the synagogue, was created with the foundation of this vision. And actually, our church and any church in the world has this same foundation. Church is supposed to be the place where we have a gateway to heaven. So this is why in, the, in some traditions, they revered the church building so much because the, the church building was dedicated to God, was sanctified to the Lord. And when people enter some sanctuaries, it's like they enter in God's house and there's the gateway, the stairway to heaven. Now let, let's read a little bit further and on verse 16, let's see, when he woke up from his sleep, he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And, and then we'll see, we see that he, he raised a pillar and he called that place Bethel. Bethel, the house of God. The house of God or the house of bread. And, and God had to reveal himself to Jacob in this particular way. This doesn't mean that we're all going to have a dream and we're going to see the same thing. But God, in particular seasons and times, He will choose to reveal Himself to us. And, and listen, God will never reveal Himself just for the sake of, uh, of our pleasure or so we will have goosebumps or we'll believe in Him. No. When God gives a vision, He has a purpose and a mission. And, and there's something that He wants really to engrave in our hearts. So we're all here because in a way, we all have the revelation that God and heaven are real. We know that most of the world around us is so focused on, on, in the material things that they decide to ignore heavens. Or when they study heavens, they study material heavens. And they'll say, oh, we found a new star that looks just like the earth, only it's smaller. And it's, I don't know how many light years away. And so only this year they found four or five planets in other suns where they say, oh, this can be inhabited. And, and uh, you know, people focus just on these things. When men try to fantasize about heavens, they do science fiction movies. And they're cool. I like to watch science fiction movies. All those monster aliens and all these things. My wife doesn't like it, but I do. I'm a guy. <laughs> And guys like this stuff, and, uh, and uh, I like to see the, the Battlestar Galactica and all these planets and all these things. And the Stargate, a gate that goes from a planet, from a world to another world. And you know, all these things, all these myths are rooted in the Bible. In the Bible. We can find Bible lessons in all of these things. And they're not just in the Bible, they were engraved in the heart of man. So even people that don't believe in God, they come up with these fantasies and all these things. Because they cannot understand heavens. They cannot understand that in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual realm, God Himself abides. He has no beginning, no end. So heaven is a, it's an eternal place. It's different from our world. Here things have a beginning and an end. But in the spiritual, you know, when we, when we pass away from earth, we pass away to heaven. And when we pass away to heaven, when we die in these physical bodies, we will get to the presence of God Himself. And we will be accountable or responsible for our time of preparation. Earth is just a preparation. Our life here is just the beginning. We are born in the natural. God will give us the opportunity to be born again in the Spirit. Amen. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are born again in the Spirit. And then God starts to communicate with us from the spiritual realm, from heavens, to earth. And He does it in different ways. One of the ways He does uh, this communication is through prayer. We simply speak and then we listen and God answers. 
Isn't this awesome? Amen. Maybe you're here and you don't have this revelation. And you've heard about God, but you don't really believe in God. You know, the fact that you come to church doesn't make you a Christian. But when, with humbleness, you decide to ask for forgiveness for your sins, and you invite God to dwell in, in you, something happens. And the gateway is open, and you can expect God's blessing. But you need to put God first. Heaven needs to come first. Because if you just focus on the things of earth, on money, on your car, your job, all these things of earth, if you just focus on these things, you will neglect the most important thing, which is to put God first. Amen. Heaven comes first. Tell the person next to you, heaven comes first. Heaven comes first. Now, in order for heaven to come first, I'd like to tell you the easy way to put heaven first. Make God your king. Amen. Now, we have a, a, a prime minister. We have two. We have the prime minister of Quebec. We have the prime minister of Canada. So in, in the world, we have presidents, prime ministers, and people have this illusion. We choose a person to rule over us, and if we don't like this person, we kick them out. <laughs> Even in church, people have this thought. We choose a pastor. If we don't like the pastor, we kick him out. It is like this. It's the way we organize ourselves. But the kingdom of God is not like this. There's a, there's a king. And when we have a king, there's the birthright. And there's a family that rules. And it's a God-given right that God has over earth. He's the king, either we accept it or not. Now, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was talking about communication with heaven. Pray. And he said, on verse 7, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words, or for repetitions. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray like this, Our Father in heaven. So he's not on earth. Our Father in heaven. Heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're on earth. We can agree on that, right? I know some people are so spiritual they're already in heaven. <laughs> I'm still on earth. So my prayer, I, I don't pray to you. So if I'm not praying to you, I shouldn't pray prayers like, Oh God, you know what happened? I went to visit this person and uh, she had so many problems. And Lord, you know that I talked about your love. When you pray like this, you're not praying to God. You pray to the people that are listening to your prayer. Those are the Gentile prayers. Prayers of information. If you want to pray for someone, you know, tell to others what you're going to pray and then pray to God. We shouldn't pray like this. But I know people develop habits and we even have you know, leaders and pastors uh, that pray these prayers from this pulpit. Like, you know, telling a story. Oh Lord, you know I was crossing the street and uh, Sister Susie was there. And Lord, bless Sister Susie. It's like God doesn't know that Sister Susie was there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> he knows everything. So, but when we pray, Jesus said, when you pray, you pray to the Father. He's your Father. Okay? Now, is He your Father? Is He your King? He's Father and He's King. So He rules. So when you accept that God rules, you talk to the heaven, to heavens, and God in heaven will listen. Amen? But your prayer has to align with this principle. The will of God is above all things. Amen. And we ask God that His will will be done on earth. Amen. Just as it is in heaven. Now, we break from earth, but what comes first is the will of God in heaven. I would like to live up to a hundred years. 
but I may fall sick and I, I might die of some sickness. Now, is it the will of God to heal me? Yes. yes. It is. Yes. But maybe it's the will of God to take me to heaven. How about that? So, in my understanding, I know that it's always the will of God to heal. But God is smarter than me. And He knows better than me. And He might say, you had enough of earth. Come up. And I'll be caught up to heaven. And you too. Alright? Yes. I don't know if this makes sense to you. <laughs> but I have a choice to make. Between heaven, heaven and earth. What am I choosing? I'm here on earth. I love earth. I love it. You know, God created a beautiful earth. I, I love my life here. You know, but I'm ready to go to heaven. When you get to heaven, there's also a gateway. And all religions explain that not everybody, not everybody will enter this special place where God is. Now God gave revelation through His Son, Jesus Christ, before He chose the prophets. And after Jesus, there was other prophets, like Muhammad and other prophets, that talked about these things. But the ultimate revelation about heaven and about God and about God's kingdom came through His Son, Jesus Christ. This is why us Christian, Christians are so kind of fanatic about this. Because other religions will say, we all have pieces of the truth. Yes, we do. But no one can go to heaven without aligning his or her life by the principles that Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son of God, teach to his disciples that were then uh, brought to us from generation to generation. And through Jesus Christ, we know we have access to heaven. And God wants to open a gateway from heaven to earth. Now, let us finish this message, otherwise we will not be in this place. But let me tell you that heaven will provide for you. When you open a gateway to heaven, it's like this. You're living here on earth, but by surrendering your life to the King, to Jesus Christ, by deciding to live according to the principles that are written in the Holy Scripture, the Bible, when God sees that you done, you, you've done this, He will open a gateway and He will start providing for you here on earth. Let's read about it. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the first man, Adam. And verse 47 says, The first man, Adam, was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man, Jesus, is from heaven. As the man of the dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is, as is the man of the heaven, so also are those who are of the heaven. So here are two, two different kinds of people. People of earth and people of heaven. There are two citizenships, earth and heaven. Now through Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you obtain heavenly citizenship. Amen. And, and this, is, this is where Christians need to understand the evolution of man. Because when we were born on earth, we were born with the sins of our forefathers. We were born with a sinful nature. And then we were given a choice. And if we decide to ignore God and ignore heaven, one day we will die and it's everlasting. You will be forever separated from God and His blessing. But if you decide to turn around your life, and if you have a revelation of heaven, now you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now spiritual things start to make sense. Now God starts speaking with you. Now you know who you are and why you're here for. Now there's a purpose in your life. Now you're listening to heaven. Now you're not from the first man, but you're the second man. You're not from the first nature, but you're from a better nature. Also verse 49 says, Just as we are born of the image of the man of the dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. 
I tell you this promise, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. So if, you're, if you never receive this second nature, you will never understand the things of heaven. It's impossible. They're like a mystery. And people debate. And that's why people debate religion. I don't like to debate religion. Because my relationship with God is far beyond, beyond religion. I've received a revelation. Heaven's gates were open. God changed my life. He healed me. He revealed Himself to me. He gave me a purpose. I know why I'm here. I'm not here to follow a religion. I'm here because, because God chose to reveal Himself just to a, a person like me, a person like you. He's amazing. He's the creator of all things. And He chose to reveal Himself to us. And He will come and dwell in us. And if we have this second nature, God will provide. You know, the man of dust is worried about material things. How am I going to pay the bills? My salary? The crisis in the Middle East? The, you know, the stock markets? All of these things. And we desire things. We need the new TV and the new computer and the laptop and an iPhone and this and, and the, all the things of the world. And Jesus said, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Shall I eat McDonald's? <laughs> or Harvest? <laughs> or Chinese buffet? Or Korean kimchi? <laughs> what shall I eat? What shall I drink? Shall I drink wine or is it the sin to drink wine? Shall I drink beer or water? Tap water or filtered water? What Jesus is talking about is it's the cares of the world. How am I going to survive in this world? Where am I going to work? And retire? And all these things. And Jesus is saying, do not be anxious for the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father, your what? Your heavenly Father, knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes. So if you put heaven first, if you, if you put heaven first, He will provide the earthly things that we need. Amen. So stop worrying. I know we worry a lot. You know, how am I going to stretch my salary to, to pay all my debts? How am I going to pay the visa card? How am I going to put gas this week? How am I going to pay, you know, the, the, the electrical bill? How am I going to afford, you know, to, to change, you know, the, the winter tires in my car? How am I going to do this? And God knows about all these things. God knows. And you might think, no, he, he, he doesn't care. God doesn't care if I have winter tires or summer tires. God doesn't care. He cares for you. That's the amazing thing. Is that God, the creator of all things, He cares for each one of us individually. He knows our secret desires. He knows everything. And He doesn't know everything in order to punish you, but in order to bless you. And He just said, put your trust in me. Give the hand of applause to the Lord. Come on, sir. Bible verse in, in a wall, in a painting. You do all these things. 
You can do all these exterior things, but heaven has to come first in your heart. Amen. Yes. Yes. Jesus never showed mercy to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the religious sects. People that were trying to do things on the outside in order to please God. And all religions try to do these things. Like lighting a candle. You know, going from here to Arabia and go around a cube several times. A pilgrimage. A pilgrimage to Lourdes in France. A pilgrimage to the Vatican. Oh, the new stuff for Christians, it's a, a trip to Israel. You know, it's just $2,500 and you're there, you're going to be blessed. By the way, let's baptize you in the Jordan. And all this stuff, and you say, I was baptized in the Jordan. <clears throat> Big thing, you know. I was baptized in the tank just like this one. And in the same thing, Amen. as if I was baptized in the Jordan. Actually, the water was sweet. I'm not telling you that we shouldn't travel and go to these places. If you can afford it, just go there. But your salvation, your relationship with God doesn't depend on these things. On the way we dress. You know, certain places I couldn't preach as I'm dressed today because I don't have a tie. And somehow if you don't have a tie or a collar, you're not holy enough to preach the Word of God. That's nonsense. That's, that's really nonsense. It's, it's complete. It's the trap of religion. Trying to establish a set of rules how we should behave in order to have God's blessing. It's not about behavior. It's about your heart. Seek first. Put heaven first. God will know if you put heaven first. God will know if, you, if, you're, if you're selling everything you have. You see, this is just an illustration. It's that person. Because the kingdom of heaven is a kind of hidden. It's not over there for everybody to see. God chose to reveal Himself in different ways. Some people say, oh, if God exists, why does He do a sign in heaven? Listen, He sent His Son. He did miracles everywhere. Resurrected dead people. He did all sorts of miracles. They still killed Him. And if, if he, he was to come the same way as He came 2,000 years ago, they will kill Him again. And again, and again, because people that are blinded by the world cannot understand the things that happen. But God chose to reveal Himself to you. That's why you're here. And you like the things of God. And you love the Bible. And you like even coming to church. There's a lot of things that you don't understand. But it's kind of like your prayers are not being answered. And you're confused. Where the Spirit of the God and the Lord is, there is no room for confusion. When God chooses to reveal Himself, you know that you know that you know. Amen. I need to sell everything that I have to buy that. See, there's people that do stuff like this in the stock market. They sell everything, they buy that, then they lose everything. And someone comes with another Ponzi scheme and they say, okay, you give me a thousand dollars and in two months you have three thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, let's put all my money there. <laughs> and people fall for it because they're greedy. But they understand the meaning of profit. Is it for your profit? Is it for your benefit? To trust in heaven, to trust in God, to put God first. When you think about your life, what comes first? Is it your kids? Your wife, your job, your studies, your career. What does come first? <coughs> oh, I'm in church, so it's God. Yeah, right. That's when the, you know, the pastor asks someone to help. There's no one. <laughs> oh, there's two or three. Or, or in a church like ours, we have about 20 or 30 percent that do everything. And I'm not here to try to condemn you, but I, I'm here just to try to explain something. When you put God first, you'll do something for Him. Amen. 
you will do something to expand his kingdom. You will put time aside to study the Bible, to pray, to come to pray, to come to church. You will not say things like, oh, it's the World Cup, so I cannot go to church. I have this soccer game that I cannot miss. Or I have this, oh, uh, you know, the Canadians are playing, so I cannot go to, the, you know, to that house meeting. Oh, uh, you know, my cousin came from Ottawa, and I cannot come to church. Oh, my family came from, uh, from, uh, from Jamaica, I cannot go to church. <laughs> Great to see you here, Don. <laughs> How's Jamaica? I hope it was. <laughs> Give a hug to Don at the end of the service. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, uh, I cannot come to church on Christmas because my family is at home. It's your choice. It's your choice. But then, listen to me. How can you expect God to answer to your prayers if you confess it with your lips, but your heart is somewhere else? It's a matter of the heart. In our heart, we need to love God with such an intensity that He will know from heaven and He will open the floodgates. And when you're in trouble, you will pray and He will answer. Amen. And those little things, those little details of your life. Someone was telling me that today that the, the snow plow just covered the driveway. Someone that is here and that. Uh, and there was no way of leaving with the car. But at the right time, after a prayer, God provided that the driveway was, the snow was removed, Amen. and your car was able to pass. Isn't that great? Yes. Praise God. And I'm so glad when someone tells me testimonies like this, because it's a constant reminder yes, yes. how God loves us so much. Yes. And in these little things, if you tell this to some, somebody else, they'll say, come on, that's a coincidence. Come on, you prayed and, uh, and you got the driveway uh, clean. That's a coincidence. Why, why do you want to put God in everything? Because <laughs> God is in everything. Yeah. <laughs> those, little things, those little things that people say, you're crazy, you're a fanatic, you're this, you're that. You know what? I have a gateway to heaven. A gateway and a window in heaven that is open. And God then says, okay, you want to do a test? You know, give me your time. Give me 10% of your earnings. And I'll open the windows of heaven. And you have so much blessing. And some of us here are crazy enough to do this. <laughs> <laughs> by faith. And you say, yes, I'm going to do this. And by faith, we give. And, and God says, give and you shall receive. Amen. And we give and we receive. Yes. And he says, knock and it shall be opened. Today, he's knocking at the door of your heart. Amen. And he's saying, in your heart. It's not about just becoming a church member. That's great. If you want to become a church member, we'll be glad. That's great. Most important thing, become, become a child of God.
that your grace will come upon us. Because you promised that you always confirm your word with signs and wonders. And Lord, we trust in you and in your word. I pray for our families here that they will be solidified, strong families. I pray for the children that they will not fall into the trap of this world. And just seeing the natural things of the world. And that they will learn that there's another reality in the spirit. And Lord, I thank you for this time and this season. And I pray for a season of revival in the city of Montreal, in the South Shore. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, because people from every nation, every language will come to you, Lord. They will receive this divine revelation. And Lord, teach us how to put heaven first. I pray that the words that we receive today will be engraved in our hearts. That the seed of the word will bring forth much fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give a hand of applause.